I made a video, Marquez made a video, so many videos, but you still had questions. Should you stop your iPhone from charging past 80%? No. So if you have your battery sh sh sure. handled, and Apple has, charging past 80% just isn't a problem. Staying at a high charge state for an extended period of time is a problem, but if you wanna charge up 100% and then stop, that's fine. It's just best not to keep constantly charging beyond that when you're already at 100%, at least not for optimal long-term battery health. But honestly, what kind of sense would it make if the only way to maintain 100% capacity was by only ever charging to 80% so it wouldn't drop to 80%, which is all you're ever charging it to anyway? That's why Apple includes an optimized battery charging feature for iOS and for macOS now, for that matter. It uses machine learning to figure out things like when you typically wake up in the morning. That way it'll charge up to 80% and then idle there overnight and only go to 100% right before it thinks you're about to get up and start using it for the day. Basically, because why make humans worry constantly when machines can just handle these things automatically? So if you're at all worried and want to baby your battery a bit, you can just flip on that setting or if you're at your desk all day, every day, just don't leave it on the charger all day, every day. Top it up if and when you need to before you go out. Should you start charging before going under 20%? No. Deep discharges exhausting lithium ion just isn't a day-to-day -day problem either. If you plan on storing your phone for a really, really long period of time, like packing it away, then yes, you wanna get it to around 50% and then shut it down before boxing it up but otherwise it's fine. I'm fine, I'm fine. And your phone will turn off before it's utterly depleted anyway. The actual percentages are kind of a lie or maybe like social engineering, like empty on a gas tank isn't really empty. It still reserves some power and now that's used for functions like car keys. Low power mode can help you extend that last 20% as much as you need to, not for the battery's sake, but for our own sake, so we don't end up without a phone, especially if we really need to use it before we can get to a charger and start topping up again, be that at 19% or at 2%. Now, if being in the red or even in the yellow causes you any stress or any anxiety at all, or you just know that you'll be out for a while later and you wanna make absolutely sure that you have enough juice left for photos or games or whatever it is you'll be doing, then by all means, you charge you. That is the whole entire point. Just don't serve the battery. Let the battery serve you and take care of you. What about charge cycles? Won't those just murder, death, kill battery health? Murder, death, kill. A charging cycle is just what it sounds like. Charging and then discharging your phone completely. It's used as a standard pretty much industry-wide to set expectations on battery health pretty much industry-wide. For example, Apple says they design iPhone batteries to retain up to 80% of their original charge capacity at 500 complete charge cycles when operating under normal conditions. And I'll get to what exactly is considered an abnormal condition in a literal hot minute. But here's the thing, modern power management systems are intelligent, at least artificially. So if you charge up to 80% and then go down to 60% and you keep doing that over and over again, 80% to 60%, it's not gonna be using the same 20% of the battery cell over and over again every time. It's gonna be deliberately using different parts of it all the time, distributing the wear or the wear down, so to speak. What those charge cycle numbers are kinda sorta abstracting away is the actual chemical health of the battery. And what I mean by that is you have a battery cell, typically one cell in a phone, sometimes two if they wanna charge faster with two cells in parallel, or it's a foldable and they have to be literally physically separated, whatever. The cell charges and discharges as lithium ions move back and forth through electrolytes between a negative and a positive electrode. And over time, as you charge and discharge, secondary reactions happen and those build up and that reduces the functional capacity of the cell, like gunk building up in the tank. That's why batteries don't last forever no matter what you do or don't do. They get used and that uses them up. So what does prematurely age out a lithium ion battery? The Iceman cometh. Lithium ion batteries will die faster in extreme cold, basically because it slows down the chemistry and the power delivery just can't keep up with demand. 
But when you return to normal operating temperatures, your phone will just return to normal operations. It's really fire. Extreme heat that'll just break down the chemistry, increase the gunk, and there's no returning from that. Leaving them out in the sun on a hot summer day, like poolside or on dashboards, or putting them in those vent clip car mounts or on top of radiators on cold winter days, just blasting them with heat. And the power management system in iOS will, yes, absolutely, gate by cutting the screen brightness first, then flashing warnings, even shutting down if it gets too hot. But it'll be damaging and prematurely aging out the battery the whole time anyway. So rather than micromanaging your whole charging situation, leave that to the machine and just focus on not leaving your phone slow roasting in the heat. What about fast charging? Doesn't that cause excessive heat and so excessive damage? Does not. Modern fast charging systems have worked out a bunch of ways to minimize and mitigate that, including charging dual cells in parallel, accelerating and decelerating the actual power and therefore speed, depending on the charge state, and having the power adapter do a lot of the hot and heavy lifting outside the phone enclosure. And hopefully, if you're charging fast, you're not charging long. What about wireless charging? Wireless charging, AKA inductive charging, matches coils inside your device with coils inside the charger. And that type of connection just isn't as efficient as a good old fashioned plug. But like with fast charging, they're getting really good at managing inductive charging and at making it faster as well. For example, magnetic inductive charging like MagSafe helps because it locks your phone in place and prevents it from missing, slipping, or being knocked off that sweet, sweet charging sweet spot. And yes, here you are literally swapping efficiency, in other words, speeds for even more convenience. And based on how popular it is, again, that's a swap that most people seem just super happy to make. Oh, yeah. And I'm just gonna put this out there. How much is your time and quality of life really worth to you? How much should you be working for your battery and how much should it be working for you? Now, sure, if you go complete God mode on it and micromanage everything all the time, always, including avoiding apps and activities that generate a lot of heat, because the stuff we do on our phones can be even more problematic than how we charge or don't charge them. And then maybe you can eke out some extra percentage points over the course of a year or few, but will you even still have your phone by then? Will you have gotten the most out of it? Will all that time and effort you put in really be worth less than the 50 or $70 it would cost for you to get a fresh battery just swapped in anyway? And I mean, if you think your time isn't worth that, or you just really, really get a deep sense of personal satisfaction of micromanaging your battery health because it feels like an epic win over the system, again, you charge you and more power to you, literally. Or if you wanna help get out and push and just make everything better for all of us, get involved with all the underlying technology behind all of this, check out the physics, computer science, and algorithm courses on today's sponsor, Brilliant. Basically, everything that the next generation of everything from silicon to software is all gonna be built on, but also math, logic, science, quantum mechanics, game theory, and so much more. Because Brilliant is the online interactive STEM learning platform with a growing catalog of courses specifically crafted to help you learn concepts by working through them yourself in a visual, hands-on way. And all the lessons are thoughtfully broken up into bite-sized pieces so you can learn at your own pace, just zero pressure. For example, have you ever wanted to learn to code, but you were put off by the overly complicated traditional computer programming courses? Well, Brilliant has actual, fun, interactive challenges that let you shift around blocks of pseudocode, receive immediate feedback and get results. You feel like you're solving puzzles, gaming even, but the whole entire time you're learning how algorithms work. And once you know that, coding becomes way more accessible and way less intimidating. Because here's the thing, everyone, absolutely everyone starts somewhere and you can get started right now, today, for free. Just visit brilliant.org slash Ritchie or click the link in the description and the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. So just click the button on the screen or go to brilliant.org slash Richie. Clicking on that button really helps out the channel and so does hitting up this playlist for all the details, all the inside info on all of Apple's technology, current and upcoming. Just hit up this playlist and I'll see you in the next video.